I'm John Hall, developer of Kit Escape, and I'm really excited to share with you today grip, dip, and spin skills that can be applied to unlimited situations. And I just want to let you know as a parent and educator, no one knows your children better than you do. So I want you to use this tape however you feel it's most appropriate, whether you want to watch it with your children or students, or you want to watch it alone and then teach the skills to the children at a later date. Grip, dip, and spin skills are simple. They don't require athletic ability. They don't require self-defense or martial arts skills. What they do require is just an understanding of why they're so important to use and why they're so effective and how your kids can use them to escape from a variety of situations. So I'm going to leave that up to you as a parent and educator, how you want to use this tape. So let's watch my son Aaron, who's six, and his good friend Laura apply their grip, dip, and spin skills to a variety of situations. Let's get started. I want to make myself perfectly clear here. If your child has the opportunity to pull away and run, go for it. What they teach in school is wonderful. Like when someone grabs you, Aaron, and you're going to pull away on instinct. You pull back, pull back, and I let go. I don't want you to drop to the ground and try to grab my ankles. What do you do at this point, Aaron? You turn around and run and find help, right? Shout, run, and find help. Does that make sense? So come on back. I want to get this perfectly clear that our instinct as human beings is to instantly what? Pull away and absolutely do that. What we're talking about here today is taking your child's self-defense to a whole nother level. When pulling away doesn't work, when kicking doesn't work, like you can try to kick me now, Aaron, try to kick me. And it doesn't stop me from what? Taking your child away. Try to hit me. Try to hit me when I grab you. It doesn't, it's not working. Try to step on my foot. Try to scrape my shin. Scrape my shin with your foot, right? It doesn't, hey, anything might work. What I'm talking about is when your child does this on instinct and tries to fight back, valuable seconds are passing. And seconds that that child abductor needs to take your student or child away. So what I'm talking about here is this. If your child can pull away, great, I say go for it. You know the old, like when you, if I grab you here and you reach in and grab your hand like this and try to pull away? Well, by taking one or two seconds to do that, I think that's great, but that could be just the second I need to what? Take your child deep into the woods where he never sees me. Aaron, you already dropped, excellent job. <laughs> Hey, if that works, great, but let's say that it doesn't. And you know what? Probably most of the time it won't work. Fighting force with force against someone who's a lot bigger and stronger might work, but against a true child abductor, a child predator that wants to take your child away and it will stop at nothing, what you need to do is shock and confuse that attacker. So look what happens here. Right when I grab Aaron and he tries to pull away and it doesn't work, and I grab his hair, it gives him a perfect opportunity to what? Just wrap your legs around my ankle, Aaron, drop down to the ground, grip. Here, let go, grab a hold of me, don't grab a hold of my arms, and look what Aaron does. He's playing twister on the ground, and I'm trying to what? And people say, well, John, he, I could walk him away. Yeah, sure I could. But it's taking valuable seconds. That kidnapper has lost control, and he's starting to panic but he, because he perceives what? I don't care if your child's deserted somewhere. It's all in the child predator's mind. If he perceives that what? This is taking too long and they want control more than anything else. Kidnappers want control in the first crime location because if they don't have control, they're probably going to what? Move on because they fear they're going to be caught and that's the last thing they want to have happen. So your child, by simply dropping to the ground, totally confusing your kidnappers, delaying the abduction, Aaron's playing Twister, and if I try to grab your hair, do you let go, Aaron? No. No, you don't. I mean, hey, I know it hurts and this isn't an injury free activity, but you don't let me pull you. If I try to pick you up here, Go ahead and let go. It's hard. Go ahead and let go, buddy. Let me try to pick you. See how hard it is for me to pick up a child? Try to let, try to let, come on, Aaron. Come on, let me. It's tough. And remember, I don't have adrenaline and neither does Aaron. So we can't recreate the intensity of this attack. But remember, the faster and the bigger he is, it's physics. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. The faster, your mo faster the movement is, the easier it is for your child to grip, dip, and spin. So it's actually more difficult to do this in slow motion when you're just practicing than in real life. And I hope your child never has the opportunity to have to use this. But you know what, next time you're at a family picnic and your kids are wrestling, have them wrestle using grip, dip, and spin skills and have them be so they can practice this stuff so it starts to become second nature. Because truly repetition is the mother of skill. I don't expect your children to watch this video or you to teach, teach these skills to your children, if you're gonna do it that way, to learn these in one time. It takes practice, but what if you just practice this you know, once a week, once a month for the next five years? and all of a sudden your child's seven now, and when they're 12, they find themselves in that situation where someone has literally grabbed them and trying to take them away, and they remember they watched this show, and they remember that you taught them grip, dip, and spin, and that split second when they're trying to kick and hit and it's not working, and they're about ready to be lifted up in the trunk of a car, what if that's when they hit the ground, they grab the kidnapper's ankle, wrap their legs around the other ankle, and spun on the ground and play twister, and if I let go, Aaron, if I let go, 
Go ahead and let go. Go ahead and let go for me, buddy. Go ahead and let go, please. Good. And I let go, and I run one way. What do you do? You get up and look at me, and look at me, though. Look at me. Because people say, well, John, what if the kid's running away and they don't give up? You're running away, right? You're running away from me. Run away from me, Aaron. Run away. But I what? I come here. And you've heard stories where the back, look what he does. Great job, Aaron. In a second, he does what? Grip dips and spin again, back to the same thing. You teach your child <laughs> never to give up. Never stop grip dipping and spinning and causing chaos in the first crime location because the whole focus here is not fighting force with force, not hurting your kidnapper, not teaching your kid how to hurt somebody. It's teaching your kid how to what? Stay in the first crime location. Great job, Aaron. You know, people say, well, John, you know, I've heard you can come out of your backpack. Like, if I grab your backpack, Aaron, I say I grab your backpack, let your arms out of it, what do you do? Run, right? Because you don't want, at this point, the minute I let go of you, there's separation, you want to teach your children to what? Don't drop and hit the ground and grab their ankle. That only works what? In a specific situation we're talking about in this video, where they're, where they're almost being abducted. If your child is broken free, you definitely want to teach your child to what, Aaron? Run, shout, and find help. Great job. Let's take a look at a situation where a kidnapper comes from out of nowhere and literally in just a second lifts your child right off the bike, the bike's left on the ground, and remember, Aaron's objective in the first crime location when he's touched by a kidnapper is to go to the ground as soon as possible. And Aaron, in gym class, you learned how to drop your chin down to your chest. Good. Let go of my arm. Don't grab me. You want to go down to the ground, drop your bottom to your heels. Good job. Wrap your legs around my ankle, grab a hold of my leg, and go down to the ground. Excellent. Now, when, I'm on the, when, I'm, when you're on the ground like this, Aaron, you don't want to let go of me ever. What you want to do is you want to grab a hold of my ankles. Do you see how you have your legs wrapped around one ankle and your hands gripped? You can interlock your fingers, grab as tight as you can. Excellent. And right now, as a kidnapper, I'm thinking, what the heck is this kid doing? You're like playing Twister on the ground. You're like Spider-Man glued to the ground. And I have nowhere to go. And my objective as a kidnapper is to have control in the first crime location and, to, and abduct this child in just a matter of seconds. So right now, I'm going to try to what? Pick this child up. And you guys that have kids, I don't care if you have a two-year-old that weighs 24 pounds. When that child doesn't want to be lifted up, it's tough. And research shows that if you do something in the first few seconds to delay the abduction, as a kidnapper, I'm starting to panic. Aaron's shouting for help. He's yelling, screaming. I'm trying to cover his mouth, not pick him up and lift him away. Aaron's cr creating chaos in the first crime location where I touched him. And I think what I'll do is what? Move on, because nine out of 10 kids do nothing. They try to fight back doing the same old stuff, and then in a matter of seconds, they're gone. But here's Aaron that instantly hit the ground right when my momentum was carrying him away. He dropped his chin down to his chest, his bottom down to his heels, wrapped his arms around one ankle and his legs around the other. It's just plain twister. I don't care if it's your left leg or right leg. I'm not going to talk details. I just want you to go down to the ground like you're in a toy store when you were a kid and you didn't want to leave. What'd you do? You hit the ground, you stayed there. And if he tries to pick you up, see how if I try to pick you up, Aaron? I can't do it, can I? You just hold on tight. You don't let go. And what happens though, Aaron, is I'm probably gonna what at this point? I might be able to pull away. Go, I'm gonna pull away, Aaron. Go ahead and see how hard it is to let go. I know we, we can't recreate the intensity of a violent attack, but the adults, you'd be surprised how well this works, no matter how big the adult is or how small the child is. It's amazing. So Aaron, what happens if I let go? Go ahead and just let go for me, please. And right here, Aaron, good job. If I start to run, what do you do? You get up and run, but you get up and run, and you get up and run like this, Aaron. When you get up and run, don't turn your backside to the kidnapper. You never want to put your back against the kidnapper because you never know if they're coming after you again because you can't defend against or escape from something you can't see. So when you stand up and run, I want you to run sideways like this, looking over your shoulder, right, this way, yelling, shouting for help, right, to create um, chaos here so adults can hear you. So come on back. Good. And when I pulled away, come on back, Aaron. When I pulled away, go ahead and wrap your legs around this ankle here. When I pulled away like this and you let go and I'm pulling away and I'm like this and I run, you run, right? But what if right when I let go, I come back to pick you up again? If I come back to pick you up like this, what do you do? Wrap your legs around the ankle and I'm lifting your arms up. Go ahead and just what? 
Grab a hold of anything you can. The whole idea of grip, dip, and spin is you, you grip the guy first, because most people push him off, but you're teaching your child to do the opposite, grip. You drop your bottom down to the hills and you spin on the ground, you spin around so it's chaos, and I'm probably gonna what? Lose my balance. And people say, well, what if he starts hurting your child right here? Hey, if he has the guts to hurt your child in the first crime location, what do you think he was gonna do inside a van two, three, four miles, four states away? You don't want to wait and take that chance. I'd rather be hurt in the first crime location. Hey, this is not an injury-free activity. People say, well, John, you know, you lifted him off the bike and he fell on concrete. Hey, kids fall out of second-story windows and survive. He's just falling a few feet and he might break something, he might get cut, but look at the alternative. Would you rather have him in a van alone where we never find him again? I don't think so. So remember, grip, dip, and spin doesn't mean it's an injury-free activity, but it will almost guarantee that you can stay in the first crime location and totally confuse your kidnapper. Great job, Aaron. Excellent work. Let's take a look at a situation where a kidnapper literally lifts your child over his shoulder. And look what Laura does in an instant. It's called go with the flow of his motion, or what you want to do is move in the direction of his force, and Laura does it on instinct naturally. She crawls down my backside by grabbing hold of my belt. Literally, as I'm lifting her up like this, you can see the momentum going over my shoulder. Well, she uses all her weight and momentum to carry on by pulling on my belt, scaling down my leg, literally dropping her head down to the ground. People say, well, John, she could land on her head and hurt herself. What if she doesn't have a bike helmet on? Well, hey, she's grabbing hold of my leg. She's breaking her fall by grabbing hold of my leg. And remember, I'm trying to what? I'm trying to hold her up. But what you're doing in a few seconds is delaying the abduction. And look how Laura, when she goes to the ground, she doesn't reach for the ground. She immediately what? Grabs a hold of an ankle. However you can, just grab a hold of it. You want to go as low as possible on the ankle, Laura. You ever been walking, you trip on a seam in a carpet? Imagine having a kid just playing twister with you. Go ahead and wrap it up real good there. There you go. And she goes ahead and her leg scissors another ankle. And hey, it's called go with the flow. The more I push and try to pull away, well, guess what happens? The easier it is for me to what? Fall. And what happens here is remember, Laura's delaying the abduction again. This isn't championship wrestling. What happens is, is I start to panic. I think people see me. They hear Laura yelling, shouting. I try to cover her mouth. I'm not trying to pick her up once again. Look what happens. It's not championship wrestling. After a few seconds, I'm big and strong. I can what, Laura? I can break the hold. So I rip off. Go ahead. See, I know it's hard. Let me pull away. And I pull away. And look what I do. At this point, I do what? I run, and Laura runs the other way. But people say, John, what if he doesn't run? Well, if I break free, Laura, the first thing you want to do is stay on your back like a dead bug and get your legs in the air. You know why? And spin around with me. Spin around like a spinning top because I'm gonna try to get the angle on you to try to pick you up again. And look, what you, when, I, when I go like this to pick you up again, what do you do? You can try and kick me off and that might work, but I'll probably just move right through those kicks. Remember in a second or two, you're in that van, gone. But look what Laura does. She grip, dip and spins again. She grips a hold of my leg. If I reach for her arm or her shirt or her hair or whatever, she doesn't reach for my arm. You can't fight force with force. She doesn't care what I'm, where I'm grabbing her. All she's focused on is what? Grabbing a hold of my ankles, wrapping her arms around my ankles, wrapping her legs around my ankles, wrapping her legs and arms. People say, well, what if you can't get both ankles? Hey, whatever, wrap your legs around the knee area, wrap your, hold on. And it's like in wrestling, they call it a single leg takedown. Kids are great at this stuff. 
you don't want to kick and hit. You could try and kick and hit, and if that works, Laura, I think that's great. I'd leave, right? But after you're on your back and you try to kick and it doesn't work, what do you do? You grip. Grip, dip, and spin. That's right. You wrap your arms around my ankle, scissor my leg, and you're set to go. And what you do is you hold on, Laura. You hold on, and you shout for help because you want to bring attention to yourself, and you, let, you don't let go until I what? Run away. Right, run away. And people say, well, what if they try to kick you at this point? If I try to kick you at this point, Laura, just let go and roll away. Hey, it's in, in, hey, if I'm trying to hurt you again in the first crime location, that's better than what? being abducted. I'd rather be hurt in the first crime location. People say, I can't fall to the ground. Yes, you can, because you have just delayed the abduction. And think about it. If he wanted to hurt your daughter, he'd be taking her down anyway. Does that make sense? So if I start to hit you or kick you, that's when you want to stay on your backside and spin and kick and to block the blows with your hands and legs. And I guarantee you, if that's what that kidnapper's doing, I've never heard of it happening that way. That's a very rare situation, but you can defend yourself by simply staying on your back and keeping your legs and arms up. And the minute I try to reach down and grab you again, what do you do? If I, if I try to come around here, good. See how she's spinning? Because you never want, you never want a kidnapper to get between your head and your legs. Because if you're here, then I can what? Pick you up, and it's a lot harder to grip, dip, and spin at that point. So you always want to keep your legs between yourself and the kidnapper by spinning like a dead bug on the ground. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hey, parents, you ever try to change a diaper? With my, my two-year-old, you try to change her diaper? She already knows how to grip, dip, and spin and spin like a dead bug on the ground, right? They're wiggling. You just want to pretend you're having your diapers changed. You probably don't remember that since you're 10 and a half, but parents do, and that's how you can protect yourself and stay in the first crime location. Great job, Laura. <laughs>
Look what Laura does. And I go in the car because my momentum's carrying me, but she's going to grip, dip, and spin again. Wrap your, you can wrap your arm around here. Get, you can change your grip, Laura. It doesn't matter. All you want to do is play, remember, play twister. Stay locked on there. Keep your head down close to my foot so I can't step on it. Does that make sense? And you're rolling around. And what do you do, Laura? When you feel me begin to pull away, you don't let go until I what? Till you feel that I've pulled away. When I pull away, what do you do? You roll away and you keep your what? Your eyes on me and you get going. You run as fast as you can, shout, roar, and find help. Great job, Laura. situations and throughout the tape, I introduce gouging the kidnapper's eye and or biting him wherever your child can. And I know gouging his eye and biting him makes us feel uneasy, but when the kidnapper loses control in the first contact area, valuable time is passing, and the odds are the kidnapper will panic and move on, not take the time and effort to hurt your child. Parents and teachers ask me, why is gouging and biting so effective? It's because when your child gouges his eye or bites him, on instinct the kidnapper will let go of him or her and reach for his own eyes or body part where your child just bit, which means he's no longer holding on to your child. And as a result, he or she can then have the opportunity to run or grip, dip, and spin to stay in the first contact area. Probably the most common question I get at a workshop is, you know, John, what happens if the kids can't grip, dip, and spin? Because clearly if your attacker is taller, bigger, stronger, there may be a time where your child can't grip, dip, and spin. The odds are your attacker is going to be caught off guard, and the children's going to be able to drop to the ground in an instant if they do it right, and they do it on their first instinct. But you know what? It's not a perfect science, and I understand that that might not happen right away. So let me share with you a, a really neat way for your child to guarantee that they can grip, dip, and spin and get down on the ground and stay in the first crime scene that they're confronted. Remember, that's our whole objective. It's not about hurting the attacker. It's about delaying the abduction, staying in the first crime location just long enough that the kidnapper says, hey, this kid is not the path of least resistance, and I've got to move on. And you'll notice what Aaron did here. Watch what he did. Right when I tried to pick him up, he tried to talk his way out of it. You know, you teach your children when a kidnapper comes by, put your hand up, say, no, I don't want to talk, and start to move away and run. But in a split second, I lifted Aaron up, and he tries to drop. He tries to pull down, tries to wrap his legs, tries to script, dip, and spin, but he can't. And I throw him right up, and look what Aaron does. He does the first skill. Actually, the first two. Great job, Aaron. He turns towards the attacker. Most children at this point will be trying to what? Pull away or hit and try to pull away and turn away from their attacker. But I'm going to teach your children and your students to what? Do the opposite of what he expects. And watch how Aaron, he hugs me, wraps his legs around my waist, hugs my neck. And I think as a kidnapper, what? I've got him. And so as a kidnapper, I'm actually going to what? I'm going to relax a little bit and think I've accomplished my mission, right? But Aaron, in a split second, right when he hugs me, what he does, he doesn't poke my eye from a distance, you know, in self-defense, because if Aaron tries to reach from a distance, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to defend myself, and I'm going to see it coming. What you want to do is you want to be sneaky. So from a hugging position, that's the beauty of this. I don't expect it as a kidnapper. Aaron just slides. It's a slide, not a hit. He slides his hand around. He keeps his head tucked down so I can't see his expression on his face, and plus he protects his head as well. And in a split second, Aaron just slides the thumb around, the finger, whatever finger you can get. He digs in and gouges the eye. It's called a retinal tear. And as a parent, you know if you've ever had a finger in your eye, how painful that can be. And even if, not, even if the kidnapper's on drugs or alcohol and he doesn't feel pain, guess what happens? His eye starts to water and his eye starts to blink. And in a split second, my natural reaction as a human being is to what? Let go of Aaron and hold my eyes. And that gives Aaron just the opportunity to what? Grip, dip, and then spin on the ground. And now he's got me. And once again, as a kidnapper, I'm starting to panic. 
I can't take this child away. I'm afraid that someone might see me. So what's my objective now? Aaron holds on until what? I pull away. Aaron's objective is to stay in the first crime location. And Aaron, when I pull away and let go, what do you do? You get up and once again, you run, but you keep your eyes on me and make sure that I'm not coming back after you and you go get help. And as a child doctor, I say, hey, that was not the path of least resistance. I had no control in the first few seconds. My eyes are watering, I'm holding on to that eye. And in a split second, this confrontation is over and your child or student is safe. Great job, Aaron. What if your child or student finds himself in the arms of a kidnapper, carried like an infant, carried like a baby, right? Where you say, hey, John, this guy's 6'4". There's no way in heck this child's going to be able to grip, dip, and spin away. What do you do in this situation? Hey, this is very dangerous. And this isn't a perfect science, but your kid still has a chance. Your student or child can literally grip, dip, and spin at the last second. You never say never. You tell your children never go with a kidnapper. I don't care if it's the last second, right when you're about ready to be thrown in the van, Aaron. You notice how I kind of think I have control of you? Look what Aaron's doing. He's trying to wiggle, but I'm trying to hold him. The minute I throw him, we start to throw him, what Aaron does. He's literally collapsing to the ground because as I tried to throw Aaron in, it gave Aaron that opportunity to what? Drop down to the ground. Aaron, you could almost feel that you had the opportunity to, to go down to the ground, couldn't you? Excellent job. See how Aaron's locked onto my ankles and literally I'm stuck outside my van thinking, what the heck's going on again? And literally in a second or two, Aaron had the opportunity to grip, dip, and spin right outside the van door so it's never too late to stop a kidnapper. So you tell your children, if you're trying to go down to the ground by dropping your chin down your chest and dropping your bottom to your heels and trying to go down but it's not working, never give up. Because even if you're halfway inside the van, right when his momentum is starting to throw your child or student in, you can tell her, him or her what? At that point, by letting go of you a little bit to throw you in the van, what does he do? He gives you that second of opportunity for your child to drop down to the ground, play twister, right? I'm going to try to what? I'm going to try to kick him off. Look how Aaron's, he's like a riding a bronchin bull here. He's like trying to like an eye let go, Aaron. I rip away. Okay, go ahead and let go, buddy. You're too good, man. You're too good. And I try to pull you in. What do you do? What do you do? You don't let go. You try to grab a hold of the ankle. You can even get your hips off the ground and go inverted a little bit and wrap your leg this way. Good. Playing twister. And hey, I guarantee the kidnapper is going to say, hey, get this kid off me. And he's going to send him back to his parents. Does that make sense? Excellent job. The child or student has just delayed the abduction. Great job, Aaron.
Let's play what if again. Same type of attack, but maybe Laura doesn't have the opportunity to reach back with her leg. She can't reach back for the, my leg and find it because she's because my leg's moving. Look what she does. She does a leg press and she, she literally what? Push your legs off the car and like try to go back in again. That's right. Right when I get you here, Laura, what do you do? If you don't hold my arms, what you want to do is you want to either hold, if you can't hold my ankle, you're trying to push, but the more you push, the more I can just push you right in. What you want to do at this point is reach down and grab the seatbelt. Grab the door, get your head down to your chest, remember? And the minute you what? The minute I'm trying to push you in and you reach and grab for something, guess what that does? It changes my momentum and guess where Laura goes? Down to the ground. And when she goes down to the ground, what does she do? She wraps up again. Excellent job, Laura, very good job. So what you want to do, Laura, is if you find that you can't drop to the ground in a first second or two, which usually nine out of 10 times you can, but there's always a chance you can't, you do what? You push off inside of the car. And once you push off, it gives you a little momentum to what? Rock back. And then what do you do? Don't hold on to my hands. That's instinctive. People, when someone grabs you, our instinct is to what? Grab the hands that are holding us. But you don't want to do that with grip, dip, and spin. You want to what? Grab any part of the van to what? Help force yourself what? If you notice, I help. I actually push Laura's chin down. Because you're just learning this. this is, you've only learned this a few minutes ago. And as the more you practice it, the better, easier it'll get for you. But you drop your chin down to your chest and you're literally what? Holding on to anything you can to what? When you pull up on this and force your chin down, guess where your whole body goes? To the ground. Down to the ground. Your whole goal is to stay outside of that van as long as possible. And remember, this isn't championship wrestling. So when I pull away, what do you do? You roll away and keep your one eye on me as you run. Great job. <laughs> You know, we want to teach our children and students that it's never too late to stay in crime location A, that first crime scene where the attacker confronts you. And once again, let's take a look at a situation where Aaron tried to grip, dip, and spin. He tried to run. It didn't work. He ended up in the front seat of the man's car, and he's about ready to drive away in a split second. And here's what we want to teach our children to improvise and adapt. Clearly, Aaron's probably going to what? He's going to try to reach for the door and unlock the door, but I've got him locked, and he can't do it. And even if he does, I hold his hands, and I put it in gear, and I'm gone, right, in a matter of seconds. Here's what I want you to teach your children and students. The instant they are thrown into a car, and they can't open the door and try to roll out, of, roll out of the door or try to run at that point, you know, that's what you want to teach your child first. Hey, try to get out of the vehicle. But things are happening so quickly, and that's easier said than done. So what happens when Aaron tries to unlock the door? He can't. And all of a sudden, the car is about ready to move. You see the man start to turn the keys. You see him start to put the car in gear. What if Aaron just applied the skill of that retinal tear, that eye gouge, and by hugging your attacker still and smothering him? Because it's kind of hard to drive when a kid is attached to your waist and your neck. So Aaron, go ahead and hop on my lap. Aaron hops up on my lap, wraps, hugs me. And I'm thinking, what? I'm going to be driving down the road with a, hugging a kid? Do you think other people might notice that? But in a split second, what does Aaron do? Remember, he slides that hand around because I'm going to try to try to pull him off. So right when he hugs me, I don't even see his hand coming. See how he slides it? Eye gouge, dig. He's going to pull your child's hand off, and his hand, he's going to cover his eyes for a second. He, you know, people say, well, won't you make him mad, John? Hey, nothing is more dangerous than having your child abducted. I'd rather have your child hurt once again in the first crime location if he decides to hurt the child because he scratches retina and can't see anymore. But you know what? Kidnappers, I don't care how mean he is, I don't care how tough he is. You know, when your eye is watering and you can't see, it makes a coward of all of us. And no matter what he feels, he what? Can't hurt what he can't see. And so at this point, Aaron slides down and then he goes for what? The door. And by me holding my eyes, one one thousand, two one thousand, a few precious seconds go by. Aaron can unlock the door. I'm what? I am can't see, and maybe I try to pull away. Aaron is gone over. See how you can apply grip, dip, and spin, and that retinal tear, that eye gouge in a split second, no matter, no matter where your child is. So it's never over till it's over. It could even happen, you know, people say, John, 
Well, what if it happens so fast? He's soaring in the car and he speeds away, and you don't want your child to roll out of a moving car, right? You want to wait till he what? What if? I guarantee he's going to hit a stop sign or a red light in the next, you know, what minute or two? What if your child at that point hopped on the man's lap, wrapped his legs around his waist, gave him a hug, and the man's going to think what? Don't cry, little child. Don't hurt. You know, don't be scared. But what? Your child's just getting in position to tear and scratch his retina. Does that make sense? So your child can either do it right when he's in the van or the car, or teach your child what? It's never over till it's over. You always want to try to stay in the first crime location. Never end up somewhere isolated and deserted. What if at the next stop sign or the red light, your child grabbed your attacker, hugged your attacker, lured him in? It's like a trap. And he thinks what? I got the kid where I want him, he's just scared, he's giving me a hug. No, that's when your kid slides his finger into the attacker's eye and he's blinded and can't see for literally minutes and that gives your, opportunity, that gives your child or student the opportunity to escape. Great job, Aaron, excellent work. what I try to pull away and if I try to hit you at this point Laura if I ever try to hit you when you're down on the ground I want you to go ahead and let go because if I'm hitting her that means I can't abduct her because I can't hit her and what take her away at the same time and remember the most deadly child predators never want to hurt your child in the first crime location they want to what lure them away or literally blitz attack them and pick them off the ground and carry them away so if this child predator is starting to hit, hurt your child in the first crime location it's time to celebrate I know that sounds crazy I never want a child to get hurt but I'd rather have a child get what hurt in the first crime location than abducted so at this point if, if I begin punching you Laura what you do remember I talked about what being a dead bug and you want to keep your legs what between yourself and your attacker, open your hands up. Keep your hand, legs up like this. Good, good, good. And if I sink down to come to you, good. If I sink down to try to punch you here, what you want to do at this point, Laura, is you want to lift your head up and tuck it underneath my tummy and grab a hold of me and hug me. That's right. I'm teaching your children not to hurt your attacker, but to do something totally nonviolent and unexpected, and that's to what? Hug your attacker. You ever watch a hockey fight or a boring boxing match? What, what do they do? They hug each other, but it's against most people's instinct. But if you teach your child at a young age that the best way to defend themselves is to not hit or kick, it's to what? Hug their attacker and literally smother them because now you can't what? You can't hit, you can't punch, you can't get hurt. And what if Laura at this point, I know this sounds crazy, but bit my tummy. tummy. You can teach your child it's okay to bite. Not their brother and sister, not their friend, but against a stranger or someone who's trying to take them away. What if Laura bit me in the stomach right now, a very sensitive area? What would I probably do? An instinct I'm going to what? Push back, and at this point, Laura what? Kicks and then rolls away. And people say, well, John, you don't want to make him mad in the first crime scene. That might make him hurt her more. Hey, he's already trying to kidnap her. There's nothing worse than that. <laughs> Thank you.
We've watched Aaron and Laura apply their grip, dip, and spin skills to a variety of situations. And clearly, we haven't covered every possible type of attack. And you know, it's impossible to memorize all the hundreds of ways that our children could be abducted. And that's really not the best way to teach our children. What we need to do is teach them these skills and then they can apply them the instant they're confronted by a kidnapper. And I know that brings up a question in your mind as a teacher and educator as, and as a parent, is how can I really make sure my students and children will really use the skills when they really need them? And, you know, that's a tough question. Um, we can't recreate the intensity of a violent attack and we don't want to scare our children. But you know what? Repetition is the mother of skill. And I can tell you that Aaron's little brother's four and they practice grip, dip, and spin, <laughs> you know, wrestling and having fun without even knowing it. They're grabbing each other's ankles or taking each other down to the ground, and it's a safe, fun thing to do. And it brings up a, a, a story that a, a mom told me after a program I did at a school one day. You know, she said, John, my, I bought the tape and, and, and we watched it and my kids practiced it. And, you know, I wasn't really sure if they remembered it or not. And then several months went by and we were at a family reunion where my eight-year-old son was there with his cousins and brothers and sisters and and uh, there was a pool there and uh, they thought it'd be funny if they throw my eight-year-old uh, son in the pool and guess what he did he was grabbed by, I think four or five of his relatives and the mom said right when he was grabbed guess what he did he grabbed a hold of them spun towards them dropped his bottom to his heel and he stayed on the ground and they literally four or five of his cousins and brothers and sisters could not lift him off the ground and could not drag him in the pool. It was amazing. And that's when it hit me. I thought, you know what? He did that on instinct. He did that automatically. And clearly it's not a panic situation. But she said, you know, it made me feel good that he could apply these skills in a split second in a situation like that. So you know what? We can practice grip, dip, and spin and have fun and deal with this uncomfortable subject and prepare our children without scaring them. And I hope that story helps you and motivates you to share with your students and children fun and creative ways that they can practice grip, dip, and spin skills. Because clearly, I don't expect you to watch this video once and get it. You have to practice it over and over until it becomes automatic for our children and our students to use grip, dip, and spin skills. So I want to thank you again for um, sharing grip, dip, and spin and the kid escape concepts with your children and students. And please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks again and take care.